Hey, welcome back to um, Dark Souls Lore Through. Um, this is still a voiceover. Uh, continuing where, where I kind of got cut off because I wasn't aware um, that it was the end of the episode. Um, the I think the Purging Stones are created in the Clams. I think the Twinkling Titanite is probably created in the Clams. Um, and I think... Seath uses them for that, basically. So anyone who's gotten Purging Stones through the game has gotten them through Seath or through the clans themselves. Um, just a subtle point. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess one thing that I was going to talk about here while we have plenty of time uh, to chat, because I do this a couple of times, um, is that I'm going to do a Dark Souls 2 playthrough after this, um, I think, uh, much in the same way, a lore through and a one where I just kind of do an easy build for me, um, where I just kind of do some dex thing or something, um, just so that I can get through the game quickly and get all the items. I'm... I mean, in terms of lore, I'm probably better with uh, Dark Souls 1, but uh, for everything else, I'm probably better with Dark Souls 2. Um, it was my first Dark Souls I played, and um, the, uh, like, I put, like, I mean, I put, like, 300 hours into it, um, which, you know, I mean, for some people that stream and play, they put thousands of hours into it, but from, you know, just... From a non-streaming standpoint, just I got 300 hours out of that game. Um, or like 350 or something like that. Um, I, I did play Dark Souls 1 right after it. Um, so I... Uh, um, by the way, the reason I'm trying to kill these uh, clams is because when I... They can come into the boss fight. I mean, I could lure them away in the round of the boss fight, but, you know, why not just try to kill them? They, they're technically easy to kill, I guess. It's just... I, uh... I'm a little rusty with these guys. Should have gotten flipped there. Um, but anyway, so I, I put some serious time into Dark Souls 2 and then played Dark Souls 1, and, uh, like, blind, you know? And I, the only thing is I had known... I had seen so many people play Dark Souls online that I just didn't really... Because I got Dark Souls 2 when it came out, um, like the day it came out. So Dark Souls, you know, kind of was ruined for me. And I kind of wish it hadn't been because, uh, yeah, if you look in the clams, you can see all the skulls. How, where, where, the way that I think that the purging stones are made. Um, I wish I had. I wish I had not... You know, at the time, I, you know, you don't know if you want to play it or not, so it's just, you know, getting certain things spoiled for me wasn't the biggest deal, but I would love to go back and play this game without any knowledge. I mean, like, essentially with the knowledge I know about the series, like, you know, read every item and, and do all that, but just, like, but never have this game itself. Um, but anyway, and then I went back to Dark Souls 2 after playing this, and it took me a while to actually get back to Dark Souls, and then, you know, I've played this one now, um, quite a bit. Um, at this point, it's the one I prefer to play through, um, just if I want to sit down and play mindlessly. Um, it's usually these, these areas, these weapons, and these, these mechanics, um, but I did play through Dark Souls 2 recently as a sorcerer build, because I did that with this as well. And I tried to do it as a lore through, because um, I never really did that with Dark Souls 2. I've done, you know, previous lore throughs, you know, like for myself, of 1, 3, and Bloodborne. But I'd never really done, I mean, I had heard a lot of, I knew a lot of the story, and I knew a lot of the kind of sub-areas, or the sub-plots, or whatever. But it wasn't until that time where I really connected 
the whole how Dark Souls 2 is related to the rest of the games, you know. Um, you know, it's famously disliked, um, which I, which was like a big surprise to me when it happened, because I, the way that I recall it was Dark Souls 2 was super popular on, um, you know, streaming and stuff and, and YouTube. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. So th we can see the Primordial Crystal. Uh, through there, and Seath isn't here, uh, is a key thing. Uh, he, he also, his white dragon breath curses people, so you can see the cursed people inside there. Um, uh, so, but yeah, once we go in and trigger this, it's funny because um, Seath, I guess up in his tower still, is, you know, we're gonna come in onto his lair where he's basically hidden this, uh, crystal that keep, gives him everlasting life and he's like what the f and uh comes running in uh to protect it and um so i think it's i think it's pretty funny um i'm not sure what i'm talking about here but hopefully i walk in pretty quickly Probably just theorizing about what's gonna happen because I don't remember. Because I, I usually skip cutscenes when I play it nowadays. So I didn't remember. There's a lot of build up to this fight, I guess. Oh, I'm talking about the Moonlight Great Sword. I'm talking about how I don't. Uh, I always struggle with getting it, uh, as we'll see here. Um, and I think I'm just trying to explain what I'm trying to do. Um, I think, because I do get it, I do, after a few tries, I think my problem that I had was that I was hitting kind of too close to Seath's body. Uh, and, and you should kind of hit more towards the end. Um, but it's kind of hard. So what I'm going to try to do, uh, or what I do do, is I try to get Seath to break his own crystal. It gives me some extra time to get behind him. Yeah, it's funny. For being a quote-unquote puzzle boss, they certainly do hammer at home. And he's like... <laughs> Get the f <laughs> Don't touch that! But yeah, you can see he has no eyes at all. Or, or, or something's grown over his eyes. So yeah, I stand in front of it, try to get him to break it, then run around. This first time I don't notice that it gets broken, I don't get it time, whatever. So we'll just... Let this play as <laughs> I talk. So yeah, I you know it was very popular on stream. I mean, people streamed it all the time, did PvP uh, on it a lot, and um, then I remember once like three came out, people started talking about Dark Souls two, and they're like, Dark Souls two is terrible. And although I agree that it's not anything like um, Dark Souls 1, Bloodborne, and 3, like, I was just so confused because I had never really seen people have that opinion of it whilst they were playing it or whatever. So I just I felt like, oh, I guess... I'm just watching now, and I'm just trying to figure out, like, how did he break the crystal? And when did he? And how did I hit him so many times without doing any damage to him? It just... This playthrough has really <laughs> weird things going on, from good luck to bad luck to whatever, but... Yeah, if you don't get it on the first thing, then you're pretty much not whatever. And I, and I tried to get it, of course, that's why I died. 
Now, you know, as I say, like, I don't, I don't want Dark Souls 2. I think, in general, like, although some of the things look cool, um, like, the biggest problem is, like, it's textures and stuff, and it just looks bad. Uh, I think the gameplay is bad is not a good argument. Um, I, I do like the gameplay. Um, the fact that the lore is bad, um, I don't think is a terrific argument because, as we'll see, and you know, there's no audio. Apologies for this whole thing. Um, you know, as I did the lore through, I, I disagree. I think the lore is really interesting. Um, and I think, you know, the fact that uh, Miyazaki did not direct it, design it, and he kind of came out, you know, against it, I think was probably the main impetus for people disliking it. But however, I think I have to look his name up. Because um, I can never remember who was the director of. Um, Tomohiro Shibuya and Yui Ta Tanimura. So yeah, Yui Tanimura. So the original guy, Shibuya, and maybe I'm getting these backwards. I'll have to read about it before I actually start playing it, but I think Shibuya tried to take it in a certain direction, and that direction was a little weird. Um, you know, I mean, it's the B team, it's not Miyazaki, it's not the main guys working. They're working on Bloodborne. But then Tanimura, you know, something happens with Shibuya, and Tanimura comes in, and he completely changes the game. And he tries to pull it back to um, Dark Souls 1 as much as possible, with while still giving its own voice. And I think what he did was brilliant genius maybe um i mean that's a word that gets thrown around a lot and i certainly apply it to uh, miyazaki just because in terms of my understanding of what he's done i think it's on the level of like the great artists of the world so i don't i don't feel um uncomfortable saying genius for uh, miyazaki for sure but you know maybe tanimura Maybe uh, not genius, but uh, certainly um, what he did completely changed the whole like series and and brought. I mean, you know the way the bonfires work are better. The way that the uh, items work are better. Um, the you know. I will go through it when we do the, the play, but uh, the actual playthrough, but um, he did tie it into the lore in a very significant way. Most people wanted to, you know, because like Dark Souls is kind of self-contained. There's nothing you can really do um, with it. Um, this is a story. It ended, and that's probably why you know Miyazaki didn't want anything to do with it, which is fine, and I get that, and I would prefer that they do new stuff like Bloodborne. But if we're just evaluating Dark Souls 2 on its merits, you know, it uh, it uh, it brought the whole concept that this has happened over and over and over again. And that there's different places and different times that, you know... I don't know if this is the one I get. I guess not. See, I, I really don't fully understand how to get the Moonlight Greatsword because I did, like, 2,000 damage to the the tail, and I think the tail part, the correct part, but it, I, I don't know, maybe just 
just the wrong area. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, he he created weapons and, and and items and concepts that are used in uh, that are improvement on Dark Souls One, um, and that they're used in Dark Souls Three because they're better. Um, and actually, at this point, I think Dark Souls Three is my least favorite. Um, I do, I do say that uh, I think the lore is. Uh, oh, that's what I was gonna say. People wanted maybe Dark Souls Two to be like from the same era of Dark Souls time, but like in Baldur or in Kareem or in Katarina or in Astora. So you could see some of these other places or Benheim. And um, it might have worked. It might have been cool. But I mean, as I say, like the Chosen Undead was went to Lordran. I mean, Lordran is the only place where any of this would happen. Um, you know, like yeah, I mean, I suppose Dark Souls 2 could have been in Baldur when the, you know, Night King Rendell was fighting off the undead curse that swept through Baldur. I mean, I suppose that could be it. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. That's kind of like, you know, a, a, like a spinoff, not a sequel. And so I think what happened with Dark Souls 2 and the way that they tie it in to the original Dark Souls is so nice. You know, and again, like the people that do lore videos don't touch on it all that much. So it's really only the community. You know, I've only really read people from the community that really acknowledge how strongly Dark Souls 2 is tied to Dark Souls 1 and, and that it is essentially that um, in a way. Um, you know, for all the people that wanted Dark Souls 2 to be a different location that's mentioned in Dark Souls 1. Uh, you know, I think if you read into some stuff, I think that you get that. Um, and I think it's it's pretty strong evidence for that. And I think it's put together quite well how they did that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess people didn't like it. So uh, we don't talk about it all that much. So I think it will be fun to, um, to play it. By the way, I'm, I don't have Scholar of the First Sin... Which, you know, maybe I should get for the Larthir. I've never played Skull of the First Sin. And, um, and, uh, I think that they've changed item descriptions to tighten up some stuff. Um, you know, I mean, that certainly is a good criticism of the game. It wasn't finished. Uh, it, you know, they, they had to, to make a, a better version where they kind of tightened up some things more. But, eh. You know, I don't know. They, they were in a weird spot. I think what they did with it was was uh, magnificent. So I'll be excited to do that. And then I'll do uh, Dark Souls 3 as well, probably. Because uh, that has a great story. It's not really related to anything here. I mean, the only thing that's related... So yeah, this is... I get it, but he I hit it enough times, and then he slams his tail down on me. And I guess I do hit it. <laughs> but I do get them in my great sword. So I'm really excited. Because <laughs> uh, it's a hard one to get. It's great for. Uh, and there's his uh, tail. It's great for intelligence builds. builds and uh, in my, in my sorcery build that I did last time, I wasn't able to get it. I didn't. I wasn't able to do enough damage with the uh, sorcery build. I, like, you can't like shoot sorcery at the tail. And I didn't really have any weapons leveled up that can slash at it. But. Um, yeah, so now that I've, uh, <laughs> I kind of just tank this usually, and now that I've, uh, gotten the tail, I can just fight it normally, get that twice in a row, that's weird. Um, uh, but yeah, I figure I'm not, yeah, he's almost dead anyway. Yeah, Dark Souls 3, it is, to me, lore-wise, completely unrelated to 2 or 3. Um, but it has its own internal story that plays off of the mechanics created in 1 and 2. And uh, it's certainly fun, so...
Uh, but yeah, we get the bequeathed Lord Soul Shard, just like the Four Kings. Um, Seath got a shard from Gwyn. Um, yeah, <laughs> Ragdoll uh, Tail, still in the arena, it's cool. So yeah, let's look at the Moonlight Greatsword. This sword, one of the rare dragon weapons, came from the tail of Seath the Scalus the pale white dragon who betrayed his own. Seath is the grandfather of sorcery, and this sword is imbued with his magic, which shall be unleashed as a wave of thought. <laughs> I missed that. Um, but yeah, you can like shoot out, um, yeah, you can shoot out like a uh, sorcery, like a soul spear, or uh, kind of like what the golem did. The Moonlight Greatsword is actually really important for Dark Souls 2. Um, uh, well, it, it, there's there's kind of a sub-story about it um, with uh, a guy in there. Um, so yeah, let's read the Seath of Scalus. Soul of the Albino Seath of Scalus. Uh, a fragment of the Lord's Soul discovered at the dawn of the Age of Fire. Seath allied with Lord Gwyn and turned upon the dragons, and for this he was awarded dukedom, embraced by the royalty, and given a fragment of a great soul. Although just a piece, it will still satiate the Lord Vessel. It's interesting that, you know, Gwyn gave this to him. Like, in other words, this is what he wanted, maybe? That he, you know, when, when Gwyn's like, what, what can I do to repay you for like helping us and he's like give me access to the knowledge of the world which makes sense because uh you know his story is that he you know was born without scales and um and in you know he probably wants to figure out all that stuff and be like what's going on so, I mean, he has motivation, I guess, to, uh, to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, for all the things that I, this is the way I see it playing out, like, if, uh, um, you know, Gwen's like, what do you want? Anything. I'll give you anything for what you did for us. And he's like, I will, I want to be a duke. <laughs> and I want access to the, uh, regal archives. Gwen's like, you got it, boy. I'm just imagining Seath giving a, giving a high five to Gwyn. Um, so yeah, if you noticed that uh, Seath had like tentacles for, for legs. Um, I don't know, I think that that's important. Um, I guess we'll talk about that in the next episode, but, um, it, uh, I think it's, it, it might be relevant to what he's doing. Um, so yeah, I'm just going through all my stuff here and trying to clean up at the end of the episode. Well, it's not the end of the episode, it's just starting. I just, uh after the boss I'm just trying to get everything in order here and what do we do for the rest of the, this episode it kind of turns into a bit of a loose ends video from what I remember and I take care of everything else before I go to the painting because yeah we're done with all the souls I mean technically in the game here the next thing that we do is we go to fight Gwyn. Um, and, uh, but, uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing all the, all the other stuff, all the extra content, which, the painting we definitely have to do. It's a great story associated with the painting. And, um, yeah, in the painting, we're going to learn about Velka. Uh, and 
there's a lot of interesting things about the painting. Some lore based, some just design based. Um, but what possibly could I do for another 40 minutes? Because we'll see. Going back to Duke's archives. Back to the cell. We did Logan. We've gotten all the items. Oh, we're going back to uh, Seath's room now that he's gone and dead. Um, because I thought that maybe we would find um, Big at Logan's stuff there, because it didn't appear when we reloaded. Um, that time. Oh, he just clipped me. Um, how am I lost here? I needed to have gotten off on the lower, the lower level. It's funny, you know, playing this so much and playing it so much recently, I still get confused about some locations some places in the depths some here for sure I've gotten lost like three times on camera um, oh boy nothing good <laughs> could come from this good that the channeler's uh, spells are pretty much blocked here Otherwise, uh, yeah, this would have been a death, no question. And all just to go check out Seath's room, where we don't really find anything. Yeah, I guess I kind of went on a spree here, and I tried to kill everyone uh, before going in the painting, which I shouldn't do. That's going to be right before we kill Gwen. Like, we're right before. Um, I do kill some people, but, um... Eh. <laughs> I wonder if without the, uh, sound back there in my silence, if you can hear my cat snoring. There's been sounds that I thought that for sure could would come across, and when I listen to it on YouTube, it doesn't, so who knows. Um, yeah, so yeah, Seath is gone from here, and now there's a chest. That chest is there when Seath is there, uh, by the way. Okay, large magic ember. Ember required for weapon ascension. Um, handled only by the Vinheim magic blacksmiths. Yeah, so like all of this is here, actually. Um... Like that, uh, that ember and this, I mean, the stairs are there and this item up here is here. Um, it's just, they're not really accessible cause there's like a layer of crystal, like from Seath being there, I guess. Not really sure about how that works actually, but, um, I'm just running around to see if, uh, Logan's stuff is somehow here and I, you know, didn't remember where it was, but, uh, spoilers, it's not here. Um, anyway, um, so, yeah, we're done with the Duke's archives now. Check. Um, and yeah, before we run into the painting of Ariamis, we are going to um, um, take care of all the last little things, collecting all the last items, 
and doing uh, stuff with uh, NPCs and merchants and stuff like that. So, um, I think I'm talking about the building that you see from uh, Anne Orlando and how this is like the top of the that tower that you see. So. The scale, I think, seems a little bit off, but I don't know, it's probably correct. I, I thought that you would be fighting most of the thing in the heart of the mountain, but if everything adds up to where it should be, like when you look at it from Man Orlando, if it all um, matched up, I mean, that would be the case. I guess when you travel up the hill and travel up the um, elevator, it takes you up all through the mountain, I guess. Alright, so going to Firelink, we're going to take care of a couple storylines. One that I just miss out of my peripheral vision is uh, Sigland. Yeah, I'm going to reinforce my Estus. Forgive me, I wish not. Still says the same thing. I don't think she has any new dialogue for the rest of the game. Here's Sieglin that we saved. Oh, hello again. We're both managing quite well, aren't we? But I haven't found my father yet. Have you seen him? Yes, we have. Really? Then I must be off. I'm sorry he's caused you trouble. He has a knack for that. Really? I'm sorry he's caused... So, because of the way that I did Sig Sigmire's line, I had to reload that so she comes back to Firelink. Well, hello again. I have finally located my father. All of your help was invaluable to us. Thank you so much. I was finally able to pass on my mother's last words. My father, as he went on his final adventure, don't worry. That's just the way he is. Undead or no. Sort of reassuring, really. If he goes hollow, I'll just have to kill him again. That line makes no sense to me. Um, if he goes hollow, I'll have to kill him again. So that either implies that you can go hollow and then come back. Or that she's killed him before <laughs> before he was hollow because as far as I understand it like once you go hollow you become like a zombie like you know the guys we fight and that's it like you basically lose your sanity I don't understand a scenario where she would have needed to kill um, Sigmire in the past whether he's undead or, or just a human the only time you would ever need to like put someone out of their misery is if they went hollow. Which I think only happens once. Anyway, I don't know. But she said that she's going to pass on her mother's last words. And I wonder what those are. But yeah, so... I think the... Uh, Zigmeyer's storyline's probably been altered from the original intention. Um, like. My father, as he went on his final adventure. Don't worry, that's just the way he is. Undead or no. Sort of reassuring, really. If he goes hollow, I'll just have to kill him again. I just wanted to re listen to the line because uh, it's not not the clearest thing to me but yeah so I think you might it might have been better to uh, meet Sigmire in different orders um, but uh, 
but you don't. <laughs> like, it would have been nice to meet him in Blight Town when you were actually in Blight Town the first time. And then at Sen's Fortress. Like, he was going to Sen's Fortress, and then we saw him in Anorlando, which makes sense. Yeah, so we're going to look at the uh, couple of uh, outfits here that um, Domino has. Hey, Shemai. I didn't expect to meet anybody here. I suppose great minds think alike, eh? <laughs> hmm. I'm afraid. So, yeah. Nothing new except for the um, Crown of the Dark Sun and all this stuff. Crown of the Dark Sun, Gwendolyn, protector of the forsaken city of Anorlando. This crown of the gods demands faith, immeasurable of its wearer, but it is imbued with dark moon power that enhances all magic or sorcery. The image of the sun manifests Gwendolyn's deep adoration of the sun. So he liked his father. The power of the moon was strong in Gwendolyn, and thus he raised he was raised as a daughter. His magic garb is silk thin and hardly provides any physical defense. So yeah, my theory about this is that it says that um, the power of the moon was strong, and so he was raised as a daughter. Um, I'm actually not sure how that relates to anything. Um, because, you know, we think we know sorceries and the moon and all that are, are associated with male characters uh, as well as female. Um, what I think happened is that he was born deformed with, um, you know, serpent legs. And they, Gwyn's solution was to put a dress on him so that he wouldn't look weird and then they just said oh uh, because it's my second daughter so that's my um, theory on why he was raised as a daughter um, but um, he also speaks like a woman a little bit he has like a bit of a higher voice so I don't know if it's like chicken or the egg type thing but um, yeah why he was born with um, deformations and all that is a theory that I will I will kind of give a little bit later once we learn some more stuff about the painted world. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if you know. You know, he was powerful with the moon because he was raised as a daughter, or if he was raised as a daughter because he was powerful with the moon. I think that there's more to the story. It is also interesting that the uh, the the outfit looks a little bit like the painting guardian set, which is related to one of the knights of Gwyn. Well, not the outfit, I guess, but the painting guardians are related to. Yeah. Well, that is a shame then, but no matter. So, we'll have a couple more um, boss outfits to look at uh, at uh, with Domino before we're done with the game, mainly from the DLC. Oh. There you are. Just so you know, Master Logan has left on his own again. It seems that he is still determined to find the famed Regal Archives in Anorlondo. I intend to search for him. Only before I leave, there is one thing I wish to do. You see, Master Logan has left most of his books. With them, I could teach you Logan's sorcery. You have done much to assist me. Before I leave on this journey, I will teach you all that Logan has to share. So yeah, I think he's just, basically, since he left, they're just a lot rationalizing why he oh, can hello. teach. Oh, hello. Then let us, as promised, I shall bequeath Master... It's not that I'm concerned for Master Logan's welfare. Even in this treacherous land, Logan's skills are unmatched. He is a true hero. No, the reason I seek Logan is, well, it's really my own conceit now, isn't it? 
Yeah, so it's just, not that I'm concerned. Just a rationalization for um, having all of the uh, new spells with him, so you could do that. Um, it is interesting too. He says that it's his own conceit that he wants to find Master Logan, which is kind of what Dusk was telling us about modern sorcery. It's all about ego. Goodbye then. Do stay safe. Which is weird because it's kind of associated with wisdom and in, you know, modern religion and philosophy, wisdom is associated with ego death, but so be it. That's that's this game. Um, we're gonna go finish out Sigmar's uh, line uh, storyline here. So cool. I love the stone dragon. Um, I just also wanted to say that <laughs> it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a joke, funny irony there that uh, um, he says, "I it's not that I doubt Matt Logan's skill. He's so amazing, but." You know, blah blah blah. I'm just throwing it out of my own conceit. Conceit, but yet every time we've found Logan, he's been trapped in some terrible plot, either by the man serpents or by the channelers or whatever. So <laughs> I don't know if I exactly uh, trust his ability to uh, to survive just about anything. But Griggs thinks he can do no wrong. That's what happens, I guess, when you're... <laughs> I just wanted to kind of... <laughs> get killed. Uh, I wanted to kind of take a look at the clams here and see how they compare to the ones in the archives. And uh, they're quite a bit tougher down here, which you know I I could have sworn that. Uh, how many feet do they have? They have five feet. Huh. Um, I could have sworn that Ash Lake was just like no big deal, like the Hydra and the clams or whatever. But on this playthrough, I really have been struggling with the amount of health that they have and such. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think it's a little bit of a joke that Griggs is so confident in his master, and yet his master <laughs> really was, uh, pretty bumbling. Yeah, so the Hydra jumps the divide. Um, I'm not going to take on the Hydra at any point because uh, you only get a dragon scale from it. And, you know, we've. It makes me think that maybe the Hydras are related to dragons. Like they have multiple dragon heads or whatever. Or if they're a weird form of dragons. I mean, who's to say what. There's Sigmire and Sigmund. Who's to say that there were, like, only one type of dragon in the. In the, for the ancient dragons um, th I mean there could have been like that could be a dragon of sort and the, the stone dragon looks a little different than obviously Seath looks different and the ones in the opening cinematic so there might have been a whole tons of different types of dragons yeah so Sigmar had to be killed so he went hollow and I just love his position here. It just, you could tell that he was fought by Sigland, and you could tell he, he got hit with his arms back and his sword hits the ground and then he falls on his sword and then his neck crumples. It's awesome. But anyway, we get a reward from 
finishing out this quest line. My father always follow them. These things are good. He will cause no more trouble. It's finally over. I will return to Katharina. You assisted us so greatly. I can hardly return the favor, but please accept this. It's of no use to me now. Get a slab for our troubles. Um, yeah, so she's probably not undead. She doesn't, she wants to go home, and she also has no need to upgrade her weapons anymore. So, yeah. It's kind of a nice detail. Uh, and there's no sense in killing her because yes. oh, no, I want to see how she fights. You're one of the bad ones. Then there's only one thing to do with you. She doesn't drop anything though. And I don't know what sword that is. If it's the claymore or bad. Oh, she hits hard. Oh, she just biffed it. So yeah, that's all for uh, Sigmire now. Wish he dropped his stone speckled uh, ring. Alright, where to next? Don't recall. But there's obviously a lot I do here. Oh, I'm probably going to go grab Ingward. So, this is kind of one of those things that even veterans of the game might not know about. Um, just because it's so rarely done under the conditions in which you beat the Four Kings. You can't really go back after beating the Four Kings easily. You have to intentionally come back down through, um, you know, through New Londo. But, um, ah, I'm also gonna, I'm gonna speak to Rickard first, so. But he has nothing to say. Hey, hang on. That's a sorcery. Well, he has one thing to say, actually. Yes, it certainly is. First I've seen since my banishment from Vinheim. What do you say, friend? Mind giving that to me? This is no man's land. I'm the only one who could handle it anyway. Yeah, so that's a, just a detail. I don't think it really says much more, but uh, he was banished from Vinheim. Yes, as you should. I won't disappoint you. I'm taskless no longer. It's just an interesting thing about him. Probably. What is it? What is it? Probably why he's in that Come jail. Soon. Don't let Probably why he's in that jail cell. You know, so maybe he did something wrong, actually. Um, but anyway, what I was saying is that. Uh, because he beat the four kings and he can't really go back up through the abyss. Um, you know, it's just, you have to like, like consciously go to New Londo and speak to Ingward again. Um, so I'm going to show you that it's, you know, not the most roar, lore rich part of the game. I guess he does say one thing that could, I don't know just kind of round out his character. But uh, 
I wish he came and like told us all about the four kings and who they were and Artorius and but he uh, he doesn't. But I wish you know everyone said more about everything because I just love the story in this game. So yeah, I'm not even equipping the transient curse, I'm just making a run for it. I'm glad I didn't get knocked off the ladder. But I made it. Alright, let's see what Ingward has to say for himself. Magnificent. You defeated the four kings. Impressive, even for a bearer of the Lord Vessel. And with this, my purpose is exhausted. I have not seen the sun for a long time. Perhaps I could do with a change. Yeah, so the lore in that is that, you know, he was actively trying to protect the seal. Um, and now that we've broken the seal. Magnificent. You defeated the four kings. Impressive. Uh, now that we've broken the seal, um, he has no reason to maintain it. I mean, so, I mean, that's literally why he was, he was there, um, actively guarding it. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's a little bit of a lore. He also said that it was impressive, even for someone who got the Lord Vessel, which I, you know, it's always so complimentary. So here he is back in Firelink. And I wanted to look exactly like him. Oh, hello. The sunlight made me wince. But now I've come back to this dark hole. So what brings you here? I will help you in any way I can. I think that's a, a wrong dialogue. Um, because come back to this dark hole? I don't know what dark hole he's talking about. I think maybe he would have come to Firelink Shrine and then he would have gone back to New Londo and you would talk to him and he'd say that. And they forgot to fix it. I don't know. <laughs> it was a weird, weird statement. Um, but yeah, he sells the same things and he doesn't say any additional dialogue, which is unfortunate. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to, yeah, I guess I'm going to go and uh, kill the fair maiden, fair lady or whatever. And, uh, grab her, her soul. Again, I don't know why I'm doing this, because I should just wait till before I take care of Gwyn, but if we did that, Engie said he would give us his wrath, and here he slowly comes. Why, you monster! This is good. That's a good line read. I like it. So yeah, he attacks with the egg sack. Just like, all, he's basically just another enemy. The only thing that's terrible, is, like always, is these... <laughs> the worms that basically uh, don't, st like, apparently have infinite stamina. And could just come at you. Um, I do note that they writhe around like the leeches in the swamp. And they also, their front face looks like those like tentacles and demon ruins. 
The ones that like come out of the walls and stuff. So, I don't know, I wonder if they're all, all three of those enemies are related. Um, it's just cool that there's, you know, some sort of congruency. I think they're all dead, of course, they're not. I wanted to read the Firekeeper Soul, but <laughs> there's a rogue worm or maggot. And there goes the audio. We only have a few minutes left, so it's better than the last episode. Alright, so all it says is, um, To her, the countless eggs which appeared were cradles for each tiny humanity. So I guess she was, like, happy to have all of the, uh, the eggs around her. That's what we're, it's, She made good of, of a bad situation because she sucked out the blight pus from Engi. Uh, and of course he drops egg vermifuges um, just in case you get infected <laughs> by him I guess. They wanted to be able to uh, um, make sure that you weren't screwed for the rest of the playthrough. Although there are different places to get egg vermifuge in the game. Not unlimited, but I'm just saying there's other egg vermifuge. Um, and yeah, right now I am deciding that I want to kill Solaire. And as I'm about to do it, I decide that I do want to actually play out his storyline. Because he... I was going to try to get his armor and stuff to read. However, I, you know, I read it online and it's, it's not enough to not complete his quest. I mean, we went so far, we might as well summon him for Gwyn. So I'm just like, you know what? Let's go back. So I'm just going through each one and just making sure that I'm completely done with everything I need to do there. And I think I decide that I am, so I decide to head to uh, well, Firelink first. Probably because I'm going to kill Griggs and Ingward um, to see their fighting style and um, their dialogues. Oh, and I'm going to level up my Festus too. Makes sense. Um. So yeah, now I'm at plus six. Um, I must uh, kill Griggs and Ingward later. Uh, but yeah, now we're headed to the painting. The last thing we're going to do before the... Um, the DLC. Should be fun. The DLC is quite hard for me. Um, I'm good with Artorias. Spoilers. But I'm not too good with Manus. And uh, Sanctuary, Sanctuary Garden gives me some troubles from time to time. Um. Uh, Yeah, but other than that, I'm pretty good. And I've actually never done a lore through with... Oh, we're reading a peculiar doll. I'm just pointing out some things here. There was once an abomination who had no place in this world. She clutched this doll tightly and eventually was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. So, yeah, the abomination and she is the key things to remember there. Um, but anyway, I've never done a lore through with uh, um, the DLC. So actually everything is going to be new. I mean, I know the story uh, roughly and and uh, there's a few things that, I, uh, that I've just heard about, but I've never 
actually um, read through all the items and kind of taken a look around and talked with everyone ex exhaustively. So it should be a fun experience for me. Um, but yeah, I probably should have uh, dropped off the crystal ember while I was here too. But I guess I don't recall what I do. Yeah, because I, I create more boss weapons at the end of Yeah, so I'll definitely do that next episode. that on the ground there. I don't know what that is. Looks like a large peg or something or a bone. Um, but yeah, apparently there's a guy named Ariamis that can paint worlds that um, that can be lived in. Um, we, uh, we'll see these in later games, too, um, or at least a later game, and, uh, and we kind of learn the mechanic of it, like, how this is possible, um, and it has deep implications for the entire lore of the whole series, uh, but for now, um, it's just a section of the game that didn't fit with uh, the rest of it, I guess, because it was the first area they designed. And so they wanted to include it because they thought it worked so well. Um, but it, uh, it's kind of like, it almost functions like a DLC. Like you like go uh, somewhere else and then just play a self-contained area. But, um, yeah, let's head into the uh, painted world. I guess I could have shown what, uh, what happens if you didn't have the doll, but I forgot. I think it just says nothing happens. Like there's no animation. Also, I'm sad the sound is gone because right when you get grabbed there, they play this kind of generic open source sound effect. I think it was included in GarageBand. It was just funny that they used that particular uh, sound. They use it when you leave too, so I hope the sound exists for that. So yeah, this is the Painted World of Ariamis. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it now because, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to have plenty of time here. I was going to try to run to the end there, but I think you actually fall and die. So I'm glad I stopped myself. I thought that maybe there was just a wall, but I don't know that that's the case. Um, yeah, I, I do like the painted world of Ariamis quite a bit, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about, uh, you know, its design, its similarities, its differences from the game and other games, and, um, and kind of uh, what it means in the bigger whole of the game. Like, what's the story going on here? I guess that's what the whole series I'm trying to record is, but... Without getting too far into things during this uh, episode, we're going to uh, wait until next episode to get into all this. So, thanks for watching, and 
yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.